We're here at the Colorado River, eight miles down into the Grand Canyon on a day that's going to go over 100 degrees or 38 degrees C. And it's a good time to talk about electrolytes. The need to consume electrolyte drinks is part of the conventional wisdom and is perhaps even an accepted orthodoxy. But are they really necessary or even appropriate? I have no medical background, but to the best of my knowledge, electrolytes are essential minerals like sodium, magnesium, potassium, calcium, chloride, phosphate, bicarbonate sodium that are vital to key functions in the body. These may be depleted with vigorous exercise. The electrolyte name reflects that these minerals create electrical currents within the body to do things like contract muscles. There were electrolyte drinks available, mostly for medical purposes, as early as 1927, but mass consumption pretty much started with Gatorade, invented in 1965, and which today accounts for 72% of the U.S. market. The first Gatorade formulation was a mixture of sugar and salt, with citrus added later for a more pleasing flavor. Salt may well be the most essential electrolyte during vigorous exercise like hiking, although sugar is generally considered a necessary vehicle for transporting electrolytes and encouraging the body to absorb them. Hikers tend to favor electrolyte powders, pills, and even chews because of their light weight and portability. The medical community variously endorses and criticizes electrolyte drinks some because the drinks contain excess sugar and have ambiguous benefits, while others find mild improvement in athletic performance if they are consumed. Now, I like to watch other people's hiking videos, and I recently watched one where a fellow said he drank an electrolyte drink on a rim to rim hike and got sick. Then he repeated the hike, drinking an electrolyte drink and getting sick again. I'm not quite sure what his logic was. And anecdotally, the people I see getting sick on the side of the trail at Grand Canyon are typically young trail runners who heavily favor energy gels and electrolyte drinks as their primary source of energy on a hike. It strikes me that if an electrolyte drink makes you sick, you're probably throwing off your electrolyte balance far more with the illness than any benefit you could get from consuming it. Puking or diarrhea can create a real health crisis on a vigorous hike and likely put you in more danger than not drinking electrolytes. Personally, I started hiking using electrolyte drinks, but as I experimented with their effectiveness, I found that toward the end of a hike, my belly puffed up as if it were inflated. I got pretty bad gas. When I stopped drinking the mix, the problem abated. At first, I cut back the electrolytes to the last sections of the hike, but for about a year now, I've eliminated them altogether, and it seems to me that I do better without them. I don't know if it's the sugar in the mix or perhaps a heavy dose of minerals that causes a problem for me, but I do better without electrolyte supplementation. Now, I do eat natural foods on a hike, and I do consume salty foods. In particular, lately I've been eating a roll made of ham with a slice of cheese each of which contains about 250 milligrams of sodium. I've gone to this because I have a hard time eating a sandwich after hours of hiking, but the ham rolls that I keep next to my iced hydration pack go down easily well into the hike. If salt is a key electrolyte, perhaps eating natural foods is an adequate alternative way to get the benefit. Plus, as a person who remembers a time before electrolyte drinks were considered essential, we got along just fine in that earlier era. Athletes like Jim Thorpe and Jesse Owens did not drink Gatorade. Maybe they took salt tablets, and those were around in my youth, but there was even a time when athletes were encouraged to consume nothing for a competition. Plus, consider the natives who hiked these canyons for thousands of years. They did so successfully without needing electrolyte drinks. So my thoughts on this topic are to know yourself. Gatorade or electrolyte drinks may be a refreshing treat on a hike, and if you enjoy them and suffer no ill effects, go for it. Most hikers feel the same. But if you have digestive issues or nausea after consuming electrolyte beverages, you might want to experiment on shorter hikes to see if the symptoms are related to the beverage you're consuming. 
Also, on a shorter hike, you can experiment with eliminating the beverages entirely or only consuming them if you feel you're crashing or really need it. In conclusion, everyone is different, and with the kind of hiking I do, which includes vigorous hikes like Rim to Rim at Grand Canyon, I find that I hike better without drinking electrolyte beverages. And in closing, I've read some studies that find perhaps the most effective recovery drink after a hike is milk, at least as good as a commercial electrolyte beverage. And of course, there's my favorite recovery drink, a mild beer, which has been consumed for millennia, both as a rehydration drink and as a reward. Happy hiking to you, and thank you for watching.